Welcome back. So here we have the model 220K Coleman Lantern. And this was part of the four lanterns that I picked up. Um, and I said I was going to check this out and see if we could uh, do a sympathetic restoration on it. Um, so a few things I want to try before I see if it's worth my uh, time to get this one back into... Uh, pretty decent shape. Um, I already have a 220K that's in mint condition. Um, so again, I'm trying to look for models that I don't have to do full restores on. Um, you know, otherwise I'll just use them for parts. So it's funny, this has got a label on it that says uh, something, Econo Tackle or Economy Tackle for $39.99, <laughs> and I paid a dozen eggs for it, or was this one two dozen eggs? I don't remember. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I want to see is what the hat looks like. Um, that's one of my, I, I don't know, uh, things that if the hat's in good shape, the rest of it could be fixed up. But if the hat is roached, you know, the ventilator, this part, um, then... Uh, you know, it's like I said, you're wearing Sunday go to meet and clothes and uh, you got on a ratty hat. So um, I'm going to take that off and the nut is pretty tight. So I'm just going to see if I can get it off. If not, we'll add some WD. So I got some small channel locks and a little piece of leather. Lots of crunching, but it came off. Oh, okay. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to take this with some hot water and dishwashing detergent and see what it looks like. I'll bring you back. All right, so that cleaned up beautifully. A couple little spots of rust right there, which we could, we'll remove with the uh, vapor rust. And then we'll just put a little gun blue on it. But yeah, I'm pleasantly pleased with that. Um, looks very, very nice. Inside is nice. So that's a good sign. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here. And we're going to wipe this down with a damp cloth. And just see what it looks like. Already it's showing some promise. Yeah, look at that, huh? Now, we'll get a little bit of this paint clarifying compound. It just hit a spot. I want to just see if it's going to come back to life. Wow, 
that came out nice. I mean, really nice. Look at that, folks. All right, so that was step two. Um, step three is going to be this decal. Um, for some reason, they crack. Um, I, I could leave it on there and say, hey, yeah, let's the original decal. They crack. But, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Um, I do have a replacement decal that's, believe it or not, just slightly larger than that. It may go right over it, but I don't know how that's going to look. So, what I'm going to do, um, A.K. Salaman, he, he recommended, um, what is it, a 3M eraser, and Dremel makes one to get that off. I don't have one of those. And again, when I restore these and stuff, I try to do whatever I got in the garage. Um, you know, uh, I might end up getting one of those because he's, he's raving about them. So that would be really cool to have something like that. But I'm going to experiment on one of the other ones that I'm not restoring with some heat. Um, I have no idea if it's going to work. Um, I Obviously, I don't want to mess up that found paint job because we want to keep it as original as we can so let me mess around and I'll bring you back oh look what I just saw let me bring this up we got some mud bugs look at that huh little little concrete house that they make all right so let me uh, mess around with the decal and I'll bring you back all right so I experimented on this one um, I got it off. What I did was I put a little bit of heat on it and I could see it kind of, um, like, I, I don't want to say bubbled, but it kind of, kind of softened it. And then I used some denatured alcohol, rubbed that on there, and then very, very, very carefully with this, um, utility knife blade, just kind of... I didn't use this end of it. I kind of was just scraping it. And um, it came off. And I didn't do any damage to the paint. So, But it's going to be a painstaking process. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, so let me get the label off of the other one, just like that. And then I'll bring you back. All right, I wanted to see if I could get this on uh, film here. So... I didn't even use this blade. I just heated it up and I'm using my finger. I want to show you how well it's working. How cool is that so it's coming off it's gonna take me a while I'm trying not to let it get too hot and um, once I get all of that off I will come back to this stuff and clean it up all right I'll be all back. right well that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be I did absolutely no damage to the fount the paint is in perfect condition so now we're going to disassemble this. Um, we'll start by taking off the, um, the generator. Well, let's just do it. Let me uh, bring this up a little bit. That's a 7 16th, by the way, if you're wondering. All right. So 
Let's see how that looks. Wow. That's looking in good shape. Yeah. Very, very good. Now let's just put this back together for now. Probably off camera, aren't I? All right, set that aside. Now we'll take off this retaining nut. Should be a half inch. Okay. Got some uh, nastiness going on right there. I'm thinking it's a lot of that is mud. So we're gonna the rest of it's not too bad. Got that mud bug thing on my bob nest there. So we gotta make sure we definitely clean that out. So I'm going to soak this in um, a vinegar bath and get all this not so... I'll, first I'll wire brush it and then I'll soak it. So we'll put that on the side. We'll get our frame off. Bottom of the frame looks good. The frame looks pretty good except for this rust in there. But we can clean that up. Alright, so we'll put that aside. We'll take off a fuel knob. All right, now you need to just kind of make this out of shape a little bit to get it up over the tip cleaner assembly slide that off the front there's some more nonsense there but otherwise this looks uh, pretty nice so here we are we're at this point yeah this is looking more and more uh, oh that's just wiped right off nice Anybody ever notice the numbers and stuff they put on these founts? I wonder what they mean. Wow, I'm, I am uh, very pleasantly surprised. I'm not going to mess with the valve. Um, let me see if it's loose. Whoa, there's actually pressure in there. See that? So that's a good indication the valve works. <laughs> so what I'll do with the valve is when it comes time, I'll just, I have a little brass brush. I'll just give it a once over. Um, again, it's going to get tarnished again. You can make it look pretty for a short period. All right. Well, we're at the point where... 
<laughs> I'm basically just going to wipe this down. I'm going to use my paint clarifying compound. And we're going to clean it up. And we're going to see how she looks. I'll bring you back after I do that. You saw me do um, my 288. Um, and you saw me do that little test sample there. So basically, I'm going to do the whole thing like that. And I'll bring you back when that's All done. All right. I am pleasantly pleased with that. So I spent about 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, just uh, using that uh, compound on there. And I, I think it came out awesome. Look at that. It's got a couple little spots, but I'm good with that. This one was going to be, like I said, a sympathetic restoration. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's not a full-blown restoration. It's bring it back to life kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, the When I first got it, I'm like, ah, and now I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I got um, the uh, frame and the, uh, the air intake tube. Um, I actually used navel jelly, so I got that sitting on there. So I got to clean that up. Um, I got to get the decal on there, which is uh, nothing exciting to watch. But um, we'll uh, finish up with the uh, frame and the uh, air intake tube. See how that comes out. And uh, I think I'm going to leave this filler cap the natural color there. It's just like a nickel plating. I'll just clean it up a little bit. Uh, be careful with nickel plating. Um, you know, if you're going to use a wire brush, use a fine one and, I mean, barely, barely touch it because you'll, you'll pull the plating right off. So, um, I'm just going to probably soak that in vinegar, to be honest with you, for, you know, just a couple of five, ten minutes, see what it looks like and uh, call it good. So, I shall return. All right. While I'm waiting for all the other parts, I had an idea and I said, I could get this rubber uh neoprene i think it's neoprene um pump cap off put a nice leather one on here that i made and use this one hopefully to put on my 288 and i don't have to buy a new one i think they're, low, they're only like four bucks but uh hey you know let's see what happens So you're popping this little retainer clip off. Try not to bugger it up too much. I had it out of the groove and then it popped back in again. Come on now. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing, but basically what I'm doing is sticking this underneath here and trying to pop it out of the groove. Once I get it out of the groove, hopefully I could slip it up. Without messing up the neoprene. There it goes. Okay. That's in good shape. And this was working, so I could definitely see that hole being big enough to fit over the 288. So I'm going to soak this in oil just to get it nice and pliable, and we'll revisit the 288. In the interim, we have this. Okay. Now we're going to get one of the leather pump caps that I made. That hole's kind of small on that one. I'm going to enlarge that one. Let's get that one. Let's see how she fits. That's a little too small too. Let me show you what I do. So I just have a standard reamer, I'll put that in there, 
just clean up the hole a little bit. I got to get the right size punch. See? Now, I don't know if you can see that. Now it fits over that perfectly. All right? So, like we did in the 508 stove pump upgrade, we're just going to give that a little tap in case we deformed it. We got our socket, which basically is the same size as that, like that. So we could just push that back on. And you'll you'll hear it snap right in. Okay. Now we're gonna soak this. So I have a little bit of uh, again. I just use machine oil. And again, I I soaked it as little as an hour, um, preferably overnight. So we're gonna put that on the side. And then we're going to look at our generator. All right, let's get this stuff out of the way. If you ever saw my benches and my garage while I'm working on projects, you would think a cyclone went through. Um, I have a habit of just making a mess. And then when I'm done, I clean everything up. <laughs> All right. So we have a tip cleaner. We have our nut. We see we got some corrosion on there. Let's get that out. Let's get that out. And this, again, I don't know what this is made of, but this is in great shape. Let's take off the tip here. That came right off. Okay. And what else do we have here? We have this. And we have this. All of these, except for the tube, are going to get soaked in just plain vinegar and salt. Uh, white vinegar and salt. And you don't need to... Well, this one I'm not going to even soak the spring. Spring looks great. With the spring, all I'll do is this. This is just a brass... Um, it's just brass-coated steel, okay? I actually thought this was a brass brush, but it's not. It's brass coated with steel. It's steel coated with brass, um, but it's very fine. It's not like a big, you know, welder's uh, uh, wire brush. So I just take this. Yeah, it's cleaned up great. Just doing that. I mean, there's no rust or anything on it just trying to get a little bit of the carbon off so we're going to call the spring done we'll throw it in our box okay the rest of these are going to get soaked in the vinegar and salt for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes all right so i'll bring you back when that's done and then we'll continue all right on. it's been about 10 minutes let's see what it looks like i'm not seeing a ton of pink in there but uh also, you may be wondering what kind of steel wool I use. This is what I use. It's 100% uh, oil-free. Um, and it's extra fine. So, 4 out. Okay. This company is Brewax, I guess it's called. Um, I bought this a long time ago. This is great if you're going to be doing any bluing or anything like that. It comes in just a giant roll. I just pull a little piece out and I'll snip it off. I'll try not to waste it. Because obviously once you use steel wool with any kind of liquid, it starts to rust. Now you all probably remember when you were kids and you had that Brillo or SOS sitting in the sink. And it was brown. <laughs> All right, let's get a paper towel. And what we're going to do first is I got my little cleaning swab. We'll get the generator and we'll run this in it. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, that's very clean. 
Yeah, I, I think this thing was hardly used. Weird, consider, uh, considering the shape it was in. Yeah, it didn't turn pink yet. Um, I didn't warm up this solution, which has a big effect on it, but it should be fine. That's solder right there. If you can see that, like the dark spot right there, that's the solder. And again, I'm not going crazy. This thing is going to turn black again. So I'm going to rinse this under um, water, and then I'm going to blow it out. Let's check out the nut. Retaining nut. So I'll take this, and again, I'll use this little brush. All of this is going to tarnish again. I mean, you could polish it to make it look like gold. And in a couple weeks, it'll look like this again. Very nice. All right, let's get the other generator nut. Vinegar does wonders. Beautiful. Let's get the hat nut. This one happens to be nickel plated. And if you ask me how I know that, whenever I pull a top cap nut off, number one key indication is it's not rusty inside where the threads are and the most simple way is just put it to a magnet if it doesn't stick to the magnet it's going to be brass um and obviously if it's not brass color it's silver color it's going to be a nickel plated plus i could see some of the brass wearing through there so don't go crazy trying to clean nickel plated stuff it's very very thin just you know put in the vinegar a few minutes I wouldn't advise putting nickel plating in anything stronger than vinegar and not for too, too long. Beautiful. All right. Now we got our tip here. We'll be careful with that. It's so tiny. Actually, it'd be easier to put this on and then clean it. All right, so we got that done. Now I'm going to rinse them under water, blow them all off. And then I shall be back. All right. So as you can see, I put the decal on. Looking good. Jeez, uh, where did I leave off? Let's see. Uh, oh, I think I was doing the pump and cleaning the generator. So this has been soaking for quite a while. Actually, probably like a good, I don't know, 12, 14 hours, something like that. So that's all ready. Let's get that out of the way. What else do I got going on? Oh, I cleaned the um, globe. Just some dishwashing soap and water. And the collar, or the frame base, came out nice. Now this had some corrosion on it. Down here at the bottom. 
So I, I cleaned it as best I could. You're going to see it. It's not going to come off. And this had some weirdness on it. Um, I don't know what it was. Um, I used a little alcohol. I think those are clear coated. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm nursing a cold right now. Excuse me. Um, I think it's clear coated. I'm not really sure. But what I did was I cleaned it with alcohol gently and a lot of nonsense came off of it um but it uh it whatever it was kind of marked it up so what i did was i just used some of this dora clear gloss varnish and this is water-based and i just took this i'll even show you i should have put it on film to be honest with you because it's a pretty cool process so i just put a drop on there Come on now. Just a little drop like that. Then I take my finger. I didn't want to put that much to show you. I just take my finger and just very gently rub over it. And that brought back the black. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. All right, so where are we going now with this? Oh, the um, the frame. The frame gave me fits. It came out nice, but it gave me fits. There was some deep, deep rust down here. Um, I had used, instead of my vinegar bath, I used the navel jelly stuff. And I forgot that when you use the navel jelly, it leaves, it stains it like, I don't know if it's the plating or what. But uh, it was a bear, so I had to um, wire wheel it. Uh, use a very fine wire wheel because you don't want to leave a ton of scratches. And then I, I went over it with a Scotch Brite. So at the end of the day, I'm happy with it. Um, this there was some deep pitting. I actually had to use sandpaper. You can still see some of it here on on the handle on the bail. So we got that done. Um, the hat's washed. There's some deep, deep pitting in the bottom of that on the um, air intake tube, base, I guess you want to call it, um, but I don't have a problem with that. There was some deep rust back here. Again, wire wheeled it, got it as best I can. So we got that done. Then I have the, I guess we'll call these the burner tubes. I was able to get them out. Sometimes they're bare. But I put a little bit of WD-40 on them. So we'll screw these back in. Then I just use a small little channel lock. If you look down at the bottom of these, it, they're almost like a nut shaped. So I'll snug these back up. A lot of wind going on out there today. Okay, so we got that snugged up. We got the generator done. We have the little uh, plate for the uh, on-off knob. So I guess at this point, we're ready to uh, reassemble right, this ready puppy. for my uh, awesome camera skills with my hands in front of everything. <laughs> uh, one other thing I did, um, the fuel cap, I very, very lightly, very, very lightly went over this with a wire brush just to clean it up. I believe this is uh, nickel plated. So I doubt this is original, but I kind of like it. So we're leaving it that way. Whoa. Oh, one other thing. Just around here um, and around the bottom rim, I put a little bit of green, hunter green paint. 
Um, just acrylic paint, nothing baked on, no spray paint, just to kind of hide those little spots. You can see them up close. Well, maybe you can't. <laughs> All right. I got to stop doing stuff off camera. <laughs> we'll put our fuel cap back on. Let's get our collar back on. Actually, go on this way first. Get our frame on. Now we're going to put our burner on. Our air intake valve. Assembly, whatever you want to call it. All right. We got a little C clip or C washer or whatever you want to call it. That was heavily pitted too. So we'll slip that on. A retaining nut. Get a half inch wrench. Now, before you get that too tight, make sure that this collar is where you want it and right in the middle of the valve. And again, I didn't do anything to the valve assembly. Um, you could polish that up if you want. Just be careful. Don't soak it in anything unless you take it apart because it's got packing in there. I really didn't want to mess with it. Again, take another look. Let me see. I actually need to tweak that a little bit. Don't try to twist it, okay? With the nut, with any kind of tension on the nut, you'll mess it up. That's looking good. Next, we can put on the knob. Make sure it's off. I could have buffed that. I'm going to buff that real quick. How's that? <laughs> Man, did that make you dizzy? Whoa! Beautiful. <laughs> All right. I'm telling you, man, my camera skills are just so awesome. <laughs> All right. Let me get this. Get a little instructional plate, I guess, if you want to call it that.
Okay, we got that on. We got that on. What else we need to do? Oh, the generator. Let's put that back together. Let me uh, pan down. So we're going to slip the spring in. Again, for I don't know what it's exactly called, but the cardboard tube. Slip that back in. We get our cleaning tip. Carefully, carefully put that in. And we'll put our retaining nut on there. Now, back over to the lantern. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in a little. Or a lot. <laughs> All right. So, let's turn it. Let me turn it this way. So you could. Yeah, it's kind of. Let's turn it that way. So now. And hopefully you can see right in here when I turn the knob you'll see that eccentric whoa it's not turning whoa what do we got going on here the eccentrics not moving huh oh what a knucklehead. I'm thinking I'm you I'm thinking I have a 288 here. <laughs> this one has its own uh tip cleaning knob. I'm like, why isn't the eccentric moving? Oh, that's funny. Alright, you see it going up and down? So put it in the up position. And you get your generator. Slip it. I think I'm too too zoomed in at this point. All right, you're going to slip it in to this hole in the air intake tube. Now I could zoom back in. All right, and you can push it up, and then at the bottom here where that little hook is, put it into the eccentric block hole. Then put your tip cleaner down. That locks it in. See that? Then you can drop your nut on and tighten that. All right, let me uh, zoom back out. All right, and again, I've mentioned this before, but that's a compression fitting. So that's metal on metal, and the fuel's coming up that way, right? So you want to get that snug. You don't want to uh, bend it. I've actually seen a few that were bent. And that, this is a 7 16 nut. So you want to give it a good snug turn, okay? Obviously, if it's leaking when you go to light it up, you could, uh, you know, tighten it some more. All right. I'm trying to go around the camera again. Let's get our... Slide that over I there. just looked at get the up. screen. And it wasn't filming. I don't know why. All right. Um, I don't even know if you saw me get it in, but obviously it went in. And I was saying I didn't clean this off, but it came off pretty clean. Um, it says oil on it. Try to keep that as close to being able to be red as possible. Although where they put the holes, it never is. All right. Did I get that in there? There you go. Now we'll line up the holes. See, this one is going to be sideways, if I put it that way. That way it's on the other side. We'll just put it this way. Line up with the two holes on the side. Then you're going to get your little retainer clip. Let me get a pliers.
Okay. Fuel cap is tight. Valve is open. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's stiff. Oh, but it's pumping, baby. Nice. All right. So, at this point, we're ready to put some mantles on this bad boy. And, of course, I always, always fight with them when I'm on camera. This takes uh, 21s. 21... Let's say, yeah, no, just 21. All right, I like to start it while it's out, give me a little head start. Get that on there. And turn it so it's kind of lined up parallel to that. Let's get the second one. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth getting the uh, the ones with the wire in it. You don't have to deal with this tying nonsense. And then turn it. Put a second knot in this one. All right. Cut off your, uh, where's my scissor? Cut off the little tags. Be careful not to nick the mantle. All right, now, believe it or not, there was fuel in there. Um, I didn't do anything crazy with this lantern, so I didn't empty the fuel out. So, oh look, this is not lined up. Let me see, hold on. Because it was on. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to pump her up. Oh, actually, let me... Uh, let me burn in the mantles. Matches smoke. It's a smoking. <laughs> All right. Let me back that up a little bit. I'm going to restart this because I know this, this, I have a limit on how much video before it restarts. Let me pump her up. So they recommend 30 pumps. Um, I highly recommend changing any of those uh, neoprene uh, pump caps out and put in a, a leather one, and you will just be like, holy cow, what a difference. All right, so it's kind of like the moment of truth. Let's see if I hear anything. 
I hear the gurgle. It's just, you'll know what it is when you hear one of these lanterns. You hear that little gurgling. Get a match ready. We'll let the gurgle gurgle go. Woo! Nice! That worked beautifully. Oh, it went out. Let's try that again. I counted my chickens before they hatched. <laughs> There she goes. Let me uh, run the tip cleaner. Yeah, it's going out. All right, let's turn it off. So what I would do at this point, again, I don't even know if that fuel is any good, but I'm gonna give it a couple more pumps. We're obviously getting fuel up there. Could be water in the fuel, or basically what we say, stale fuel. It's a little anemic. Turn it all the way off. We'll try again. Well, it did light, so we know we're good. Yeah, I'm not liking that... Uh, It's a little fiddly, but she lit up. Yeah, so like this one, I would change the fuel out. Um, I didn't want to put fresh fuel in it at this point. Um, this one's probably going to go up on the shelf. Let me back up a little bit so you can get her in all her glory. And it's still light outside, so... I don't know how much better you can see it. Doesn't seem to be getting too bright, but Man, it's lit, but it's very, very dull, I guess you wanna if you wanna call it that. Hey, I may have to take that valve apart. Maybe the valve's a little clogged. Oh, turned it off. Alright, we're gonna light it one more time. And I'm gonna call this one good. Man, you're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. Making me waste all my giant matches.
Yeah, it's very, very faint. You can hardly see it. But it works. Like I said, this one's going up for display. If I was going to be using this one, I'd mess with it. I'd take the valve out. Uh, probably clean this valve, if I had to guess. Um, or maybe just change the fuel. It could be just the fuel. Um, you know what? Let me change the fuel. See if that makes a difference. I'll bring you right back. All right. I got new fuel in. Pumped it up. Full confidence this is going to go off. Oh, if I can get a match lit. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. I'm going to say the uh, fuel might have been a little sketchy. <laughs> I do notice some of these 220s do that pulsing thing. And I actually, uh, I joined one of the forums and uh, they were saying the same thing. It's a little odd. I got to light up another one I got um, and see if it does the same thing. I know the 228 stays nice and bright. Yeah, it's working good. That seems to settle down a little bit. I'm just messing with the tip cleaner here. Let's throw a little more air in there. Pretty cool. Well, there you have it, folks. A little elbow grease turned a two dozen egg lantern into a eight dozen egg lantern. <laughs> this one was fun. Um, I know these videos, they, they just end up so long. They're like an hour long. Um, and I didn't even paint this fountain. I just cleaned it. Um, yeah, I got to try to condense these things down if I show any more, like, kind of cleanups, rebuild kind of things. Um We'll use these as kind of a basis, um, you know, for what uh, what it is to do it from soup to nuts. So thanks, everyone, for coming along. I really, really appreciate it. I'm sending you all much, much love and respect, my brothers and sisters. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you all are doing well, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>